Hello, I'm Lodging Editor Christine Killian. Thank you for listening to Lodging On Demand. In this episode, I spoke with Unifocus founder and board director Mark Heyman and CEO Manish Arora about how hoteliers can mitigate today's labor challenges by adjusting their strategies and incorporating technology. I wanted to ask about what you've been hearing from hotel owners and operators um, regarding how they are struggling to find and retain staff today. I think it's pretty clear. We, we've all read about it multiple times. We have um, other organizations outside the service industry, um, you know, taking employees, paying them higher rates, trying to create different benefit packages. Um, and I think we're, we're still trying to find, the hoteliers are still trying to find a way to um, either find staff, but the other issue is how do you retain them? Mm. I think we've tried multiple things, but at the end of the day, in many cases, the organizations are still understaffed to the point where it's not just, it's actually costing them stream and revenue. A hotel we do work with in London, for example, can only operate at 60% because they can't find enough staff. Mm. Manish, do you have anything? Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm hearing similar themes in that, you know, while the industry is bouncing back, people are traveling, uh, labor is elusive and they're not able to run it uh, 100% occupancy. So revenue is being left on the table. And so not only leaving revenue on the table, but the service level and guest satisfaction is impacted because uh, you have restaurants that have uh, reduced hours, you have services that are not being offered. And um, then you have workers that who accept two to three jobs and are going to show up for a day or two and see if uh, if it works for them. So uh, they're finding it difficult. And technology is an enabler, uh, but you also have to you know meet people where they are and understand that you have to be more uh, sensitive to what workers want today. Yeah, and that segues perfectly into my next question, which is, what are some of those strategies to meet? employees where they are and kind of accommodate their needs a little bit more than the industry may have done in the past? I think from a starting point, the industry has to recognize that the um, workforce has different attitude than than they had 15 years ago. Um, The millennial, the Gen Z individual, even some of the Gen X have really pushed to create a better work-life balance. Um, so I think one of the key things is a greater flexibility, but I think the other part, and I just witnessed this last night is, um, how do you make the employees more comfortable in the work that they're doing? So I was in a bar last night visiting with a friend, small operation in a hotel, six seat bar, but plenty of tables, two bartenders and a manager who just seemed to be just in crisis constantly. Mm. Um, trying to get a table clean, trying to get something. So not only was were they disorganized, which is something that managers can surely help, but at the same time, there were three people at the front desk doing nothing. In fact, in passing, my friend said, so pretty boring night. And the young man said, yeah, thank goodness I'm watching the baseball game. So the other part of the equation is that um, in order to also meet employees where, where, where you can, you know, greater flexibility in staffing, better hour flexibility. But it's also a matter of how do you move resources around so that when someone is doing a job, they don't feel overly stressed in doing the job so they're comfortable and then they can meet the service goals that are expected of them. When people are left in environments where they're uncomfortable and they can't meet the goal, that tends to lend, lend more and more to them looking for another job. So it's not just, I think, a matter, uh, well, well, maybe it is meeting the needs of the employees, but it's not just when they work, the hours they work, et cetera. It's also creating an environment where they can be more comfortable accomplishing their goals and hotels need to, or or service businesses need to rethink how they utilize their entire workforce to optimize those results. Yeah, and building on that, you know, using the entire workforce means you've got to enable them to have flexible scheduling and empower them to be able to select what works for them. You know, people have multiple jobs, they've got childcare, they're commuting. And so uh, the days of traditional work schedules uh, are a thing of the past. And so employers who are 
able to enable the visibility, provide uh, not only the automation, but uh, selection and trading of work schedules. Those are the ones that are going to attract and retain labor. And that's where you know, uh, we feel that technology plays a big role. Uh, and I think you know, the more advanced uh, you are in that space, the more likely you're going to retain people and attract them and, and be able to service your end client. Thank you for adding that. And before we jump into the technology piece, I did want to ask about an area that I think is sometimes left out of this conversation, which is how these challenges around staffing are putting more and more pressure on managers. And I was wondering if you could weigh in on some of the ways that some suggestions for how hoteliers can better support their managers. Obviously, having a full staff on board would be really great, I'm sure, but if there's anything else you'd like to add, that'd be great. Um, well, I think part of it's a matter of um, making sure what the managers are doing are critical tasks they need to do that can't be done by someone else or by technology. So writing a weekly schedule, which takes a few hours at times, can be done today automatically and dramatically give them more time. But I think where a lot of the burnout occurs is using my example of last night. So the manager involved himself. So there were three people now working in this area. But it wasn't clear that the manager truly understood how to organize the tasks to get the smoothest workflow possible. Um, and what you frequently see is the managers jump in and do a task as compared to, and I'll use a restaurant as an example. So a manager will immediately go start busting tables because it's easy versus asking the host to go bust the tables so the manager controls the whole room. So part of the challenge is also making sure managers understand what the tasks are, what critically needs to be done at points in time. We're never going to get around the fact of, um, well, we could actually. You know, one of the big areas we hear about is we have managers making beds making cleaning rooms so one of the questions is why do all rooms have to be cleaned between eight o'clock in the morning and five in the afternoon why can't you have an evening staff if you don't need those rooms for revenue cleaning rooms in the evening so i think there's also a matter of um in looking at management burnout managers also burn out eight labor shirts but we're also living in the same paradigm as I said, why do rooms have to be cleaned during, during a, a nine hour period? Why can't we clean rooms at seven or eight o'clock at night? Why does the laundry operation have to run during the day when conceivably it could run from three to 11? So I think it's also a matter of taking a look at when we expect work done mm. and at times allowing managers greater flexibility on moving work or tasks to other times during the day because I'm using my example of the hotel in London, who's only operating at 60% occupancy. Well, if you're at 60% occupancy, you've got plenty of rooms to sell that night. Why do you have to, except for the stayovers, why did you have to clean the, the checkout in the middle of the day? You didn't have to. You could have cleaned it at night, which also affords an organization greater opportunity to maybe access larger uh, parts of the labor force. So there are people who are working a day shift who might be perfectly happy to work three nights a week picking up rooms. So I think part of the issue of management burnout, not just with the shortage of staff, but it's also a matter of rethinking when tasks have to be done. And by doing that rethinking, can we actually access greater, uh, larger numbers of resources that can help meet the needs of the operation and the guest? While as Manish said, still achieving high levels of service quality. Mm -hmm. and, and I think Mark hit on some great points about, you know, uh, managers playing a bigger role and being more strategic. Um, and, you know, I'd actually take a step back and say, put them in a position where they can anticipate the issues of their staff and, and not wait for attrition to occur and then have to jump in, right? So, um, Hotels, you know, uh, hospitality industry does a great job of surveying guests, right? So uh, there's an opportunity to get a pulse survey of how your 
your staff is feeling, what they need, and understand how you can adapt schedules or um, you know, other benefits you may be providing and be able to survey your staff on a regular basis so that you can ward off the attrition, right? So I would say applying surveying technology to your staff and not just think about guest satisfaction, but think about engagement and be proactive. And that's, you know, that, that's one step of becoming an employer of choice to actually listening to the feedback of your, your labor, uh, of your staff, not just of your guests. I think the last aspect is maybe managers don't have to make all the decisions. Maybe in a more collaborative environment. I, years ago, when I worked worked in an operation, we were trying to improve productivity in a specific area and uh, do better than what we were budgeted to do. So instead of just the, my management team making decisions, we called a group of employees together and said, "Okay, here's our challenges. Here's what we're confronted with. What are the thoughts?" And there are many other examples I could give, but I think part of it's also a matter of when managers are under a high degree of pressure, how much are they relying on their employees who have great ideas and great thoughts to help contribute? I can pretty comfortably state that on that, that, that early evening shift, if the whole team had been pulled together, I think a couple of the people from the front desk would have easily volunteered and said, you know, we can help in, in the bar operations while we're not doing any check-ins and smooth over. So I think it's also a matter of we have to spread the thought processes. And as Manish mentioned, um, think strategically at the manager level, but I think highly tactically, if you involve your employees in figuring out how can we get things done and meet our needs. Great. Um, and you've already mentioned a few ways that technology can play a role in this space, but I'd love for you to elaborate on some of the ways today that technology is being used to mitigate some of the issues around labor? Well, I think as, as Manish has commented, you know, first and foremost is how much business are you really going to do? You know, was in this example I gave last night, I got there about 5.15, the bar was pretty full, and the bar back didn't show up until about 6.15. Had there been a better forecast and a prediction, maybe you would have scheduled the bar back to come in at five and therefore alleviated some of the issues. So first and foremost is how good is your forecasting system? In the hotel industry, we, we've used yield management for years on the room side, um, and that predicts how many rooms we're going to occupy. But there are technologies that can be used to predict food and beverage volume or spa volume or other revenue center volume. And the more accurate that is, the better you can adjust for your staffing, even to the point where um, if you know you're gonna have a heavy dinner rush, maybe your AM um, food prep crew does some of the mise en place up front. So I think the first stage is, do you know how much business you're gonna do? And then it's been commented, um, there's technology that, that can automatically schedule all your staff. And to Manisha's earlier point, that addresses flexibility, when someone can work, when they prefer to work versus when they you know, prefer not to work. All of that today can be done automatically, relieving managers of some of the number crunching, which clearly they don't really like to do, nor does anybody, <clears throat> and have them really address the more critical part of understanding where they may be understaffed, where another area of the hotel may be overstaffed, and how do you take advantage of the crossover in order to maximize the service. And then I think also the reporting side. Um, people live today um, frequently tied to a budget. Budgets are good on a monthly basis. They don't help you run your business every day. So to have better labor standards every day that can also adjust to the adjustments in your business. For example, do you have a labor standard that when you have quad occupancy, it changes the amount of work that needs to be done to turn over the room versus single occupancy. Um, then we have, and there is technology in the market that can do that versus a manager having to guess. So I think, um, and then there are other technologies I'm sure Manish can uh, expand upon, but technology is a huge advantage, not just from a planning standpoint, but also critically uh, the use of mobile and communication can be a huge help. 
Yeah, I'd like to expand on Mark's uh, last point uh, on mobile. So if, if Mark did a great job of explaining, you know, how to use uh, predictive models and planning and schedules and automation to, to, to take some of the workload off of managers and, and also uh, off of the frontline worker. But if you're not leveraging mobile today, you're not relevant. Right. So uh, it's a mobile first environment. You know, uh, the industry has embraced that for guests. Right. It's everything from a mobile key to mobile check in. And so it really needs to um, be leveraged on the you know, frontline worker, the uh, whether you're in a bed hall, whether you're a bartender, your mo mobile devices, your connection. So um, in, in the facility and before you get to the facility, it's something that needs to be consistent. So everything from. Uh, schedules to clocking in, clocking out, uh, looking at demand forecasts. So this is where, you know, uh, we need to head as an industry and uh, it will make or break uh, ability for a business to retain their employees. I think the other, the other aspect which was commented on earlier is if you're going to have turnover, it shouldn't be a surprise. Mm -hmm. There are tools in the market today and enable an organization to measure engagement on a real-time basis. If you're running a business where you're doing an employee survey once a year or twice a year, you're not staying on top of the pulse of what's going on, whether that's bringing a new manager in and finding out what the thoughts are. But I think all too often, organizations are surprised with turnover. And the, the simple reality is that it's a very high correlation between management engagement and, and team engagement. And there's no reason why organizations can't do a much better job keeping track of those trends and also coming up with their own predictive model on how can you retain staff and not be surprised when someone decides that they're gonna go down the street or do something else. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's another important aspect of where technology can be a huge help. And building on the technology that's available today, what do you see as the future of workforce management and what, what vision are you working towards as a company? I think long term as a company, we're, we're expecting that the relationship between employer and employee will become more of a B2C relationship than a B2B relationship. We expect high levels of collaboration and we think the gig economy, use that as a broad sense, is going to continue to expand. So we're aggressively working towards far greater flexibility of allowing um, team members who make who work for organization A, <coughs> excuse me, to choose shifts, not only in that organization, but to pick up additional shifts in other organizations where they already have the right skill. Many, many employees within the hotel and service industry frequently carry two jobs. The major problem with carrying two jobs is that you have to try to balance your days off between the two jobs. If you can function as a full-time employee for employer A, but function as a gig employee for second group, now you actually have greater control over your days off when you can work and you can't, any, any of us that get into a, a, a Lyft or Uber ride, um, my wife always asks the question, so did you just start your shift? How many hours today are you going to work? So you have this ideal flexible environment. And we have to, we have to strive to do that more. So we're developing technology to um, address more of the gig, the gig worker. And at the same time, enable that individual to rate their work experience as well as the employer to rate the work experience, which will enable us, enable the, the business world to, to choose. If you have an employer who's getting great ratings from gig workers, well, then they're going to get more of those type of individuals who want to work for them. And as Manish said earlier, you know, in striving to be the employer of choice in a market, um, can, uh, we can contribute with... Um, you know, better, better flexibility um, and better, better selection, as well as we're looking at tools to address the cashless environment. Mm -hmm. um, how do we help employees uh, get more tips for the work that they're doing and working? We're working on technology 
in that area. And I think the key is labor management can no longer be forecasting and scheduling and business performance. Labor management truly needs to focus on human capital management and how do you optimize the experience of the team member in your environment, whether they're a full-time, part-time, or, or a, quote, contract employee. How do you create an environment that they enjoy working in, that they can feel successful in, um, and at the same time meeting all of your operational needs? Yeah, I think Mark hit on a theme there, which is employee experience, right? Uh, too often, uh, or you know, historically, you hear about customer experience. The employee is now, uh, you know, has a power that they haven't had in the past. And, um, you know, what I've learned in my career is uh, people want tomorrow to be better than today and they want to have a say in it. And this is now the opportunity for employees to uh, be asked, what do you like about what you're doing? What flexibility can we provide you? So Mark gave some great examples around flexibility, around schedules, around uh, earning more, around tipping, right? So even to the extent of uh, do you want a daily pay option, right? Everyone has different cash flow needs. So really the shift I think is going to be to uh, that employee experience where uh, I feel like you're looking at me at, as an individual and not as a, a worker and you understand my personal uh, constraints. You know, I have childcare issues and, and therefore that employee experience is customized to the individual as opposed to one generic experience to the masses. And I think, as Manish mentions, I, I think it really demands a uh, look. Uh, in, in in all candor, I think for years the employee was taken for granted. Um, there was one organization which most of us were aware of, Ritz Carlton, who you know historically had very very low turnover, and um, the, the 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 mission or the vision for the company was uh, ladies and gentlemen serving labor, ladies and gentlemen, and they had a different perspective of the person that was working there. I think all too often, um, we've not thought thought enough about the employee, the team member experience, as Manish was mentioning. I was in a hotel months ago, I looked at this, this um, cart that a housekeeper was using, and she was not a very large woman. Um, and I ended up helping her pull it down the hall. So we've had for years electric carts available you know, powered carts. So I think at the same time, when we look at this, we also have to look at other tools that we can make available to our team member to um, make, make their task effective, but also easier. You know, we've cleaned the rooms the same way forever. I mean, since I got into the business. Yeah, we've made some methodology changes. Um, why don't we have it? I don't know if it's working, but why don't we have Roombas in a, in a guest room that actually vacuums the carpet while the housekeeper is cleaning the bathroom. Now, how do we make the laundry operation function you know, more effectively? There are aspects uh, of the business. And if we just ask the question, what if, how would we make it easier? I think the solutions are there. Um, and, and what's happened with the pandemic and the, the challenges of labor is um, it's no longer nice to do, it's an absolute need to do. You know, people for years, I always you know, people embraced quality for two reasons. Either they were losing money because their quality wasn't very good or they were visionary, right, in really promoting it. It's time for more visionary management to come into the industry and take a serious look at how do we have that employee and manager or team member and manager leave and not wipe their brow and go, Shh, I made it through another day, but literally be able to say, wow, we did a great thing. I was talking to a, a, a partner of ours um, a few weeks ago, and they were talking about this huge increase they got in ADR. And we know that that's happening in the market. And they were trying to figure out a way to motivate, you know, the housekeepers beyond, hey, the room is clean, et cetera. And I said, why don't you do gain sharing? Why don't you pick an ADR that you want to achieve and for every uh, increment over that, contribute 5% into an employee pool? 
you're making more money. But at some point, the industry has to embrace gain sharing um, and also pay for skill. You know, today, if I have an employee who's working more than one job, I pay them at a rate, uh, and I'll just use, uh, use a dishwasher. So a dishwasher gets paid at X rate when they're washing dishes, but when they're a pot washer, if over a certain amount of time, they could pay at a higher rate. And if we put them out on the bus area, which we can do, we pay them at a different rate. When they have multiple skills, why don't we just pay them at the highest rate that their skills adjust to? And incentivize individuals to learn more skills. So as, an ex as my example, the, the individual who was working the front desk last night, why couldn't they... Why can't they have another skill of um, taking orders in the bar? So the industry needs to think more broadly about the techniques and tools that they're embracing, but it needs to be now from a vision, critical needs standpoint, not just it's kind of a nice to have. Well, Mark and Manish, thank you so much for your time and insights today. Really appreciate you participating in Lodging On Demand. Well, we appreciate the opportunity and look forward to our next adventure together. Yes, for sure. Thanks, Christine. Thanks. Thank you. Bye, Christine. Take care. Stay well. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to Lodging On Demand. If you want more content like this, subscribe to Lodging Magazine on YouTube. You can also subscribe to Lodging On Demand wherever you get your podcasts. For news and updates, follow at Lodging Magazine on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn, or visit us at lodgingmagazine.com.